say this. Oh, my um, my son plays some video game where you're in the ocean. Oh, the uh, Subnautica. You know what? You could say anything, and I probably wouldn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway I was thinking, now that like, i thought about it it's really pretty <laughs> <laughs> and then i know it's like that's a very big like big answer y'all are like um yeah that's like 20 video games right now but long story short he was like he was quasi watching it with me my oldest who's nine he was like you know how to kill a shark don't you and i was like what he was just like from the video game he's like you just shoot a harpoon in its gills duh you know <laughs> that's what they should have somebody done. Can somebody tell the guys on the boat this? <laughs> but yeah, it was just funny. He was just very like, um, like duh. I know how to do this from video games. <laughs> <laughs> like next. So I was like, okay, well, different generation. Does it impact them the same? Got it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't know how many movies we've watched for this H2OFG. Turkey's Batman <laughs> series, but I think that going out on a limb, I'm saying I think this is my favorite one that we've watched. And I thought that I probably haven't seen this movie since I was a kid, probably 20, 25 years. But I remembered, you know, a lot of it. And it's just such a part of movie culture in this country that you can't get away from it. I mean, it's the mother of all shark movies. And there's millions of them now. And so I thought it was going to be this old slow like movie from the 70s but it was i think it really holds up and i i, I liked it a lot i'm not going to tell anybody my my rating right now but i just want everybody to know i loved it um i don't think i'm saying anything new here i think a lot of people feel the same way obviously but um but yeah so um how did you guys how did you guys feel and how, had you seen it before and how like how if so how long had it been you can go gilbert how would you so I only saw it for the first time a, a few months ago. And then I, I saw it again last week. I had some friends over. The mistake was that we put it on kind of late at night. <laughs> and so while I didn't find it slower, boring, like the 70s movie the first time, this time it kind of hit hard. And there were parts <laughs> where I was definitely like, is a shark here? Did I miss something? What's going on? <laughs> so, but I think that's totally my fault. That's the timing. No, um, I, I think I think there are some parts where you're like, what exactly is happening here? What's with all the barrels? What um what are they? And we were talking about it and that was like it's fun. It's fun to have all these people around and be like, wait, are they supposed to are they just trying to track the barrels? <laughs> or are the barrels trying to weigh it down? Like what is yeah. the no. um or yeah. keep it from submerging so like buoy it up? Like I wasn't I was trying to like logic this out. But but like you said, I this is this is such a big movie that without having seen it, like it's it's part of what my friend said, the zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. Without having seen it, everyone knows that dunna dunna sound, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it just it's part of culture without right. being such a out loud thing. Which wasn't that sound wasn't in the movie as much as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a comedy. No, it was like one or two parts. It was yeah, like exactly thing, right. Like the very beginning, I think during like the opening titles and that opening scene and then maybe a couple more times but i thought it was going to be the whole maybe it, maybe i'm thinking of jaws two and three and four or whatever where they played i haven't seen any of them so i don't know a, if they're good or if they're trash i i think i remember them not being so good but it's been it's been a long time um i think there's definitely diminishing returns the sharks probably get bigger and bigger <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'm making this up but may i think one of them ends with somebody like a diver putting a hand grenade into Jaws' mouth to blow him up, which is kind of like what happened. Spoiler alert at the end of this one. Yeah. So um, I think they ran out of ways to kill the shark. Um, but anyway, uh, Michelle, how did you, had you seen it before? Um, Like quasi, like I remember being like at my aunt and uncle's house and them like watching this and kind of like periodically walking through the living room in scene parts. So um, there's that. And then I think I don't, didn't see it until like my late twenties, like for the first full time. And then it's probably been like 10 years since I've seen it again. But I will say I saw enough of it as a kid to um, like 
quasi be afraid of large bodies of water at all times. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of feel like that's like a natural human instinct, like something that's just in our DNA. But um, yeah, I, I remember having, like I used to go to the Marine Creek pool, which used to be on the north side. Now they got like a splash pad, but they used to have a pool over there. And um, which just sounds wild, but like in the early nineties, my parents would give me and my brother a quarter and my grandfather lived like two blocks away and we would walk by ourselves. We were really young guys. It's kind of questionable to be honest. <laughs> um, and we would walk from my grandpa's house and we'd go to the Marine Creek pool. We'd pay a quarter and we would like swim all day. And I feel really bad because I have no memories really of ever checking up on my brother so thank God for those lifeguards. Like, <laughs> I would just be like, peace, Ruben. You know, you're on your own. I'm in the deep end. You're in the shallow end. And, um, anyways, but I remember, other than trying to be Ariel and the Little Mermaid all the time, swimming in the pool, I would also have vivid memories because the pool was really big. I wish I could have seen it more as an adult. Because you know how when you're a kid, everything feels bigger? Just to get that the pool felt size big. reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The pool felt huge. And like, I would sometimes freak myself out and convince myself that there was a shark in the pool, which makes yeah. no sense. At no, I, so I totally It got understand. into me somehow. I, yeah. I think you, I think you're right about it being like a human thing to, to like freak ourselves out when we're in water. Cause we know that there's, you know, so much, so many bad things that can happen. Yeah. We're so vulnerable, right? Yeah. In it, you, it takes a lot of effort to stay afloat. So, so that well, was I can do loose fear of jaws but yeah but i mean to this day i can do the same thing where if i'm in i'm in a, like a swimming pool and if i really sit and like concentrate i can i can make myself feel that feeling of like something's well, in there something, something's been yeah beneath me gonna come up so yeah it's yeah definitely so maybe i'm the weird one because i'm the opposite and i'm <laughs> i'm very comfortable like zone out uh, a year or two ago, like a group of us went to the beach and I was like just floating and the waves like were really strong. And after a while, like I was like pretty far out and my friends were like, Gilbert, <laughs> please, you're freaking us out. Just come back, come back, and, like get closer. And I'm like, I'm fine, you guys. Like, I'm totally okay. <laughs> I'm just like floating <laughs> off. <laughs> the, so let me, let me ask you guys uh, something. And, um, this is sort of carrying on a conversation that we had in our, in our previous drive-in episode about the Titanic. But um, do you guys think that Jaws is wearing a wig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't tell, and it really bugged me the whole time. No. Um, anyway, if, 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 if our listeners want to go back and listen to Titanic, um, I think that episode that we did is about two hours of me saying, do you guys think Billy Zane is wearing a wig? <laughs> and I looked it up. I've looked it up since we recorded, and it's sure enough, he is. I mean, like I should have just trusted my instincts, but um, anyway, he's wearing a wig. So just to follow that up. Talking about like random things, like you were obsessed with Billy Zane's. <laughs> um, something that along those lines that caught my eye um, in this one was um, Richard Dreyfus's clothing uh-huh. <laughs> it was like simple but like he was rocking you know like right now it's a big sweatshirt revival you know yeah well, he was rocking the sweatshirts and I he was to me like when he was wearing that little black beanie he looked very like hipstery kind yeah. of yeah yes he and, was very um, I, yeah I pre- I mean granted I know that was the 70s but um I really Just a- his his understated style in this movie and his character is awesome by the way he is and, i forgot how awesome he was i always remember the other guy um roy scheider yeah but i um like his face i can never remember his name but i remember his face but um yeah richard Dreyfus, I, it was awesome the scientist uh, I, was awesome i agree about about the outfits they look very like you could wear wear that today the jeans were like a nice cut um yeah. Yeah, the sweatshirts. Yeah, um, this way the sweatshirt hang. Like um, yeah. boating kind of shoes, like canvas boating shoes. The yeah. The only thing I didn't like were his glasses. He had like these weird octagon frameless glasses that just seemed very bad for seafaring. They're going to get so dirty. 
um, just didn't like the shape. But uh, I, mean, I um, he was he was the nerd, so he, I don't know. He knew some water things, but you know, he was he wasn't supposed to fit in. But he's yeah. also and he was also like a rich nerd, so he he was like I pay for yeah. stuff myself and like all these boats and and harpoons and and cages and stuff. And yeah, he's also a rich guy. Now that we've covered Richard Dreyfuss's uh, outfits. Um, <laughs> the, the whole, you know, the plot of the movie, if, if somebody doesn't know, if somebody's been living under a rock, they, there's a giant shark attacking this island. Um, the mayor doesn't want to shut down the beaches for the 4th of July, so they keep them open. More people get killed. Um, so I read today that uh, a dog gets killed. And I did not remember seeing that in the movie. So I must have like stepped out of the room or something because I did not, would not have wanted to see that. Um, do you, any of you remember that? It's, if I recall correctly, it's very quick. Uh, okay. um, I remember the dog being in the water. Yeah, I remember that too. And I thought this is important. Oh. We're good. Yeah. And then kind of in the same thing as usual, I was kind of like watching it while doing laundry. So I wasn't like totally like super mm -hmm. focused. And, um, it happens so quick, but I don't remember people like being upset about it, you know? I didn't, I didn't notice it. And I feel like, especially when I was there with like for friends, like I felt like somebody would have been like, not that. the dog. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe I misread or um, maybe it's talking about another of the Jaws movies, but everybody wants to keep swimming. Everybody knows that people are dying and dogs are dying maybe, and they're getting eaten by a shark, but everybody just wants to keep swimming on July 4th, can't shut down the beach on July 4th. And the, I also like the mayor's different blazers. He had like little anchors on his- uh, Yeah, he his, was stylish. So it was pretty, pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, so the mayor doesn't want to shut it down. And Roy Scheider, the town, the chief of police. Um, and by the way, he's the chief of police and I'm pretty sure there's only one other police officer and they can't even coordinate their uniforms. Roy Scheider's right. The other cop is wearing navy blue the whole time. And that I for a while I thought they were on different police forces, but nope, they're on the same island police force. They just can't coordinate. Um so yeah, so Roy Scheider, uh the chief wants to wants to close the beaches and, and hunt the shark. And the mayor doesn't want to do that because they have a, a town meeting pretty early on where uh, Robert Shaw, who plays um Captain Quint, gives a really great speech. And he asks them for they're they're offering three thousand dollars to somebody who can kill the shark, and he says that's not enough. Um, I'll do it for ten, uh, but they don't want to. You know, at city government, there's a lot of rules with contracts. They don't want to just sign that contract. They probably have to go out for bids or put out an RFP. Um, but anyway, they don't hire him right then, and more people die. And um, and yeah, so fine. So eventually, uh. I don't remember what the turning point was. I think a little boy is attacked. And maybe even, is it Roy Scheider's kid? Or is it? No, it's, it was like that lady who later, she's like, where's my son? Because everyone else came up back onto the oh, beach. Okay. It was okay. her kid. The kid get killed and then they still didn't shut it down, right? Okay, so the kid dies and yes. then everyone's upset and the whole town is like, rebel, 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 get the shark, right? There's a bounty, get the shark. And so they get a shark. And I think That's it's so right. representative of pretty, people, right? It's pretty like dinky shark too. Right. It's like, oh, it's a shark. Yeah. We got the shark. So everyone back in the water. And there's still yeah. That's like, what no happened. dude. That's, That's right. not That's the right, right shark. You know, Richard yeah, Tyson, not big like, enough. Look at this little mouth. Like he Yeah, he was anything. doing his measurements. Now I remember. That's and right. But there's no way this is a shark. And everybody was like, eh. And then he it's fine. Like, shark, so right? of course. And then, it happens again, you know, yeah. Fourth, it's, and it's 4th of July. So it's <laughs> yeah. like everyone's out there and there's this moment where the mayor goes up to some guy because no one's swimming because people are freaked out. The mayor goes up to some guy and I wasn't sure who that guy was, but he's like, hey man, get up and get in the water and then other people will get in the water too. And you can see the guy's like, oh, fine. Like we'll put on the sunblock. And then like, then you start to see people like, oh, okay, we're going to go. We're going to hang out in the water. But, you know, the sheriff is still like, no, 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 no. The, the shark's still out there. Yeah. So he tells his <laughs> kid, I don't want you out in the big water. Go play in the little pond. Uh -huh. like, go, go over here. Like, you guys be safe. Yeah. 
there's that there's a shark warning people start screaming shark everyone rushes back onto the beach and it's just some punks right they're yeah just, it's like, some fake shark some, <laughs> some kids with a shark fin rig that they've rigged yeah. almost a shot but then of course like the real shark shows up in the pond and everyone at this point everyone is screaming everyone's running in that direction and i think the only guy who got eaten because his kid is okay it's the it was some adult who was watching them or just some guy out there who was like hey you guys be careful and he's the one who gets eaten oh okay right <laughs> so and the kid the kid survives but he's the still kid's okay yeah the kid somehow. survives yeah yeah, they, the they get guy. knocked into the water and they're scrambling, yeah. but that guy is the one who gets eaten. Yeah. <laughs> and so then people freak out. Everyone sees it happen. And I think that's that that triggering, like, oh, now it's real. Yeah. That shark was just a little nobody shark. This shark is still out there. And there's this moment, and I, I think it was in a hospital or an office somewhere where the mayor says something like, my kids were out there like those were my kids like this could have happened to my kids and and that's finally when they're like okay now we're gonna hire someone now we're gonna do it the right way and handle this and the mayor's like yeah man (laughs) and i looked it up um because uh clint which is this is the point where they do hire him for uh ten thousand dollars and he also asked for two hundred dollars a day whether he catches the shark or not and a case of apricot schnapps or something like that <laughs> that's his that's his price and um so yeah so they hired him for ten thousand dollars and that was in 1975 and in today's money that would be 50 a little over fifty thousand dollars so that's what he that's what he was asking for so they hire him and then uh the chief and uh richard dreyfus uh i think his name is hooper um go out all three on uh quint's little boat the orca and um start hunting the shark and the rest of the movie i feel like half the movie is them out there on the little boat and right this is where i got sleepy it, it, yeah <laughs> you know yeah it does kind of drag on it a does drag bit. a little bit it, it kind of turns into the the bro thing and there's yeah like, they had those <laughs> bickering moments which i read were real because um richard dreyfus and the the, the hunter yeah oh um, oh robert shaw like, yeah they didn't get along in real life like they would bicker a lot and so that translated really really well onto the screen um, I, I also read that robert shaw was maybe a little bit actually drunk during uh, most of the filming i mean you gotta be i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um they, it just it turned into what i jokingly said was the lighthouse right it was just a lot of time <laughs> on this bow and these three guys that were just like, ah, you're not doing this right. And like, I know what I'm doing. And it's just back and forth. And then all of a sudden there's like, wait, shark. <laughs> <laughs> wait, are you talking about the lighthouse movie with um, Robert Pattinson? And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that movie for, I don't remember why. I was entertained. And then I was like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know. I don't know if that's one we can cover uh, in in the podcast. I remember it being a little bit, a little bit risque. Yeah, um, my, my friend and I were talking about it. He's like, "You guys should do the lighthouse," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's not a whole lot we can talk about." It was in black and white. I remember that. Um, and so, yeah, so they're out on the boat for a long time. It's it's a bro fishing trip. Um, a lot of arguing. A lot of the boat catching on fire a lot of engine troubles, um, and a whole lot of barrel stuff. Um, and I think they were trying to use those barrels to keep him afloat, keep him from diving and, and to also be able to see where he is. But there was okay. a scene and maybe, maybe I missed something, but I, I remember a scene where they're shooting that first barrel at him and he can't, can't shoot it because Richard Dreyfus doesn't have it tied yet. And Richard Dreyfus is messing around with some electronic thing to put on the barrel and then he and then he finally ties it. Quint shoots, and that they get the first barrel attached to Jaws. But I don't remember them ever talking about what that electronic thing was ever again. Maybe I missed. Maybe I missed it. Do you guys remember? I, yeah, I, I don't remember either. I assume it was some kind of tracker. But then he doesn't really ever hold up a little thing and say, "Oh, here's here's Jaws is here." No. I look for the. Is bear. there an extended cut somewhere? Do we know? 
you want it to be longer <laughs> i <laughs> don't longer? <laughs> i don't but you know i just i'm wondering if some of these kind of areas well i mean maybe not where we're like, kind of like oh, what was that about like maybe it was just a cut scene or something i don't know so maybe maybe that's one of those things that gets covered in the book i did not read it this time because i mean it's kind of long too <laughs> <laughs> i i didn't see how big the book is but this is where i'm going to plug the library and say you know yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. Download the book <laughs> using <laughs> Libby or Overdrive with the Fort Public Library. You can check it out for free. Um, but I did research to see what some of the differences were. And um, this, there's some interesting things that I think, like, like I wonder if that gets put up, you know, pulled up or explained or anything like that. But uh, um, like you guys talked about the, like the mayor and the city and the economy. And I think that's enough movie wise as a reason to like, no, don't shut the beach down. But the book, according to this thing, the book, um, the mafia is involved. Yeah, and so, ah. uh, yeah, the mayor is under pressure from the mafia to keep the beaches open. The mob invested in Amity real estate and they want to keep values sky high. So I was like, what a practical way ah. to kind of like tie that in and like keep the beaches open and then, you know, the shark attacks and whatever. You um, know, I, I, when you said that, I was laughing and thinking that wasn't necessary, but I'm a huge Sopranos fan, and I think I would have really loved to have seen that now that I think about that. <laughs> right? And I think that's a, a modern thing, more so than maybe a 1975 thing, where we want, like, the extra plot, the extra subplots and the drama to kind of tie around. Yeah. Um, they were trying to keep, I read that they were trying to keep the extra subplots down in the movie, in the film Jaws. Um, oh. Like, there's this whole love affair thing that's also happening in the book um Uber. oh, oh what? Uber is actually having an affair with the wife um oh. the sheriff's wife <laughs> oh, wow and, yeah. yeah there's there was, a lot there of something about how they knew each other because he's the younger brother or something like that. he's related to someone that they that she knew and she's really unhappy with the sheriff because she's just like come on blah, blah 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 about what's going on in the town so there was just like this wow. whole other thing yeah and then he dies in the book. Oh, the shit, the shark. But no, 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 Hooper. Oh, died. Hooper. Oh. But not in the movie. Like there's the whole shark cage thing. And and I was asking my friend, like, wait, no, he didn't die, right? Like, no, he kind of like surfaces later, but he just kind of yeah, like, whatever. When the he book hid out died, in some seaweed. Oh, so, oh. and then it made sense because I'm like, well, you know, if you're not the good hero if you're in the affair with the hero's wife, so it makes sense yeah. that they kill you off. I, I'm glad they cut that out because yeah, I don't know how much that would have added and add right. that and the mob to this. <laughs> so this book sounds about, like drama. Yeah, no kidding. But I did I did read that um, Peter Benchley because I I looked this up on Libby too, and um, try, I was like maybe I read the book, but because I, I thought it would be I don't know. 120 pages <laughs> i don't know um how much can you how much can you talk about a shark attack but it's like 350 something pages and i was like you know what uh <laughs> have like three days to, to watch this before we record so i'm gonna skip it but i also i want to plug libby too the libby app that you can use your fort worth library card with and if you're not using that and you're a fort worth library patron you're crazy because i have listened to dozens and dozens of audiobooks and i've downloaded i don't know how many kindle books you can download it from libby put it straight in your kindle it's so easy and if you're not doing that you're crazy i've saved so much money not buying audiobooks and kindle books this especially <laughs> during the pandemic where that was like all i was doing in my free time um so yeah so it's it's very easy to use it's great for Worth library uh libby the libby app wonderful it's i guess it's been a while since we've introduced ourselves <laughs> yeah our plugs <laughs> yeah or talked about like you know like last on the titanic we didn't talk about anything except for titanic which is fine but i got in trouble <laughs> you got oh, in trouble really? not like not like work trouble but like rita was just like oh because i was sharing it like y'all shared it and then i was sharing it and i was like yeah let's get people listening to this stuff and rita was like yeah i listened to it i'm like was it fun and she goes you didn't talk about the library one time and i'm like uh, <laughs> yeah you can like, talk about i've talked about the library at the other ones and she's like yeah but not this time tax dollars <laughs> gilbert <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I realized that too after we after we were done. Like, and the, sorry, we funny, <laughs> Allie, um, Allie listened to it, and she was like, uh, "You know, she texted me and she was like, 'I'm listening to the Titanic episode.'" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's 
Thanks for listening. And she said, yeah, this episode about Titanic so far has mostly been about aliens and Tombstone. And I was like, <laughs> all right. Wait until hour two of the episode. We talk a lot about Titanic. <laughs> hour two. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. But speaking of uh, connections to between movies, I want to, I wrote this down because I was so excited when this happened. Um, Robert Shaw, who plays Captain Quint, uh, is in The Sting with Paul Newman and Robert Redford. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And he plays the bad guy in that movie. And the connection is that Robert Shaw is in both of the movies and that song, The Entertainer, is played in Jaws when they're on the one of the beach scenes, you can hear it in the background, that piano song. And it's played all the time in the sting because it's set during the great depression when that song was like number one on the billboards. So um, <laughs> that was, a, that was a really fun uh, connection to hear for me. And Allie came in the room and I said, Hey, they're playing the entertainer in this and Robert Shaw is in this and in the sting. And she was like, oh, great. okay. And she just kind of kept walking, but uh <laughs> So I wanted to bring that up, and um, I, I think there's a case to be made for us covering the Sting because it's about it's about uh, a, like a grift that happens in the 20s. Some uh, some grifters pull a big con on um, on Robert Shaw, and it's so good. But and there's almost no water in it at all, almost zero water. But there is a scene where Robert Redford dumps a bucket of ice water onto a drunk Paul Newman and there's a lot of water in that scene and I think maybe you know maybe we'll talk about it <laughs> so I don't know if we talked about how the movie ends and um maybe I should have said up front spoiler alert but um Richard Dreyfus gets in a shark cage the shark um attacks the cage and he has to hide on the bottom of the sea under some kelp until it all blows over and then the shark jumps up onto the boat and uh, eats Robert Shaw's character. And then it's sinking, uh, Roy Scheider jumps up onto the mast and he's trying to shoot it. And I don't remember how, but one of the scuba air tanks gets inside Jaw's mouth. Does he put it in, the, in Jaw's mouth? I think, yeah, he like shoots okay. it in or something. Okay. And then that's what causes like, and then he shoots it with a gun, I think. Yeah. And, it, and then he jaws blows up, so the shark explodes. Um, the end. And they they actually swim off towards the island. Uh, Roy Scheider and Richard Dreyfus laughing, having a good old time, like nobody just got eaten by a shark. And uh, yeah, the end. Yeah, that's all I was gonna say, I guess. <laughs> so that yeah, you know. The ending's kind of abrupt, it feels like. It's mm -hmm. like, shoot it, boom, the end, tied it, the credits rolling. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> Just quick. But I kind of liked it. I was like, what else are they going to do? They're going to go back and the mayor's going to thank them. They're going to have a parade. Like, what's going to happen? Let's just, let's get out of here. Because um, <laughs> I did say up top that I, I, I loved it a lot. And I stand by that. But yeah, there are some parts where it drags. Uh, there are some parts where it feels kind of of the time. Uh, which was the 1970s just 30 years ago yeah mm -hmm. yeah just 30 years <laughs> yeah um i'm i'm gonna say it. i'm gonna be the controversial one just like in titanic that iceberg iceberg didn't do anything to anybody you know like they ran into it <laughs> i feel the same way about jaws like this is a shark who's just doing what sharks do right he's mm -hmm. just like i'm hungry i'm looking for food i'm hungry there's some food i'm gonna go get the food yeah he didn't do anything. Yeah. It's our I, we swim like seals. Right. We, we splash <laughs> around. We look like yeah. what sharks want. It's the bad guy is humankind and their hubris, right? It's like, no, I want to keep making money. So I'm going to leave the shores open. Kids die. People get yeah. angry. They're going to go hunt the shark. And the shark's like, I'm just, I'm just eating. Like, what do yeah, you, like why are you hunting me? <laughs> and so notable quote, I was, I was arguing this with my friend, my friend, Bob, and he says, I don't know how to argue that you should definitely be on the side of humanity. And I'm like, Duh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, 
you just left it alone it would have been fine you know just let the shark do its thing nobody we didn't need to be in the water you know what i mean the yeah. shark would have gone hungry he would have gone somewhere else but instead they're like just like here's some food mm-hmm. yeah the uh in the book anyway the mayor's about to get his kneecaps busted by the mafia he's got to open that beach keep those hot dog stands <laughs> going um no i i i think i maybe agree with you because there there's some parts there's a lot of scenes of the shark being shot by different things by guns and by harpoons and being stabbed and I, you're definitely supposed to you know be on the side of the guys on the boat right but it feels a little bit like maybe too much like they're enjoying it a little too much like trying to kill the shark and they're they're definitely <laughs> anthropomorphizing him into like this murderer uh and then you know he's got all those barrels he can't it's harder for him to dive you just kind of feel sorry for him a little bit um but but at the same time uh robert shaw um his character was my favorite character and when he got eaten i was genuinely <laughs> sad and i had looked it up during the movie and he he passed away only a few years after this movie was made so it's like that's kind of sad too because he was such a good actor and he went too soon he could so it's just kind of sad and i didn't want him to die i wanted i in my memory it was richard jifus that died and everybody else on the boat survived so i don't know i don't know why that was my memory but you blocked that out yeah but it is <laughs> too sad yeah. yeah but um if anybody wants to do a robert shaw impression this would be a good time uh, michelle you been <laughs> practicing uh no um <laughs> i did tell you about it michelle you you did okay. and uh oh, okay i was like that was uh, left field <laughs> uh, i decided to pass <laughs> well i've been i've been walking around all week saying like a doll's eyes so, um, <laughs> i had the idea and i saw michelle in person the other day at work and i said hey, i think i'm gonna do a robert shaw impression on that episode uh you should work on yours too and i forgot to tell you but um if you want, if you wanted to, now would be a great time. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I'll, good. I'll, I'll, I'll be him once he's dead, like that. Let me... Um... <laughs> Being silent. Oh, you know what? So I feel bad. I should have researched this more, but um, I've picked up somewhere that Jaws is kind of um, similar to Moby Dick. Have y'all, did that come across anything that y'all read? I didn't yeah. even think about it. Yeah, just kind of it, like out on the ocean, like battle with a monster kind of a thing. I have never read Moby Dick, but the little I know about it is that, yeah, it's about a captain chasing a shark to his death, right? So, or uh, not a shark, but a whale. Whale. But, yeah. You didn't uh, get forced to read it in high school? No, we read. No? <laughs> oh, I read it. Uh, in, uh, I don't remember it very well. So. First, for whatever reason. It's one of Allie's favorite books, and she talks about all the time about how I should read it. And I was like, it's very long. Um, I've heard that it's like very um, not abstract, but very like uh, it's a whole metaphor, right? Like the whale. Yeah, the yeah. It's kind of dreamlike, isn't it? Is is it sort of like surreal? Again, I, I, it's been too long. Uh, the main thing that I remember, yes, that it's a metaphor. And um, also that there's like chapters and chapters just describing like wailing. Um, and I remember mm -hmm. that being torture reading through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I remember. And even I, I, I like want to, because I love sailing stuff. You know, I love stuff on sailboats and, and the ocean and, and whatever. Um, and I'll usually watch any movie with that in it. And I've tried to watch, there's a version with uh, Patrick Stewart playing Captain Ahab. And I tried to watch that and I even can't get through that. So <laughs> no, I guess it's just not, not in the cards, but, but yeah, no, I think. Like an yeah, audio book. Ooh, that's going to be a long one. Just put it on like fast read. So it like, <laughs> yeah, let's get through the slow parts. <laughs> that's yes. a good point. That's, that is such a good um, a perk of audio too. Mm-hmm. That's a great thing about Libby app is you can go all the way up to four times the speed. And trust me, some of the audiobooks that I listened to uh, over last year, maybe I didn't like them so much. And I definitely sped that up 
And it sounds crazy at first. It's like you're listening to Alvin and the Chipmunks, but <laughs> you get used to it. And now if I listen to an audiobook on regular speed, they are reading so slowly. Really? Oh, yeah. So I have to, I have to speed it up now at least to one and a half. I was going to say like 1.5 is the fastest I can go, but any faster than that. And it's like, uh, <laughs> my, my brain. Here. Well, it, it depends on the, on the reader. And that's true. So yeah. some of them do read a little bit faster, but my normal speed now is like, um, like two and a half. Wow. I, re- <laughs> I know that sounds like bragging. I'm not bragging. All I'm doing is I can t- listen to this book so <laughs> fast. <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> That's a, that's the, that would be the dumbest thing for me to brag about. All I'm saying is I did get through a lot more books because I sped them up and I still know what happened. But the more you do it, the more, the easier it is. Anyway, Libby app. It's wonderful. Um, so make sure Rita will definitely know. <laughs> worth, um, this time. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to read part of the famous Indianapolis speech um, that Robert Shaw gives, if that's okay with you guys. If we could do a little sure. a dramatic reading. <laughs> mm. And unlike Robert Shaw, I'm totally sober, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Sometimes that shark looks right at you, right into your eyes. And the thing about a shark is he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eyes. When he comes at you, doesn't even seem to be living. How's that? That was pretty great. Scene. <laughs> that was pretty good. At first, I was like, "What is going on here?" Can you and can then, you read the and entire? Then I was like, oh, that's. <laughs> can you narrate the entire Jaws book to us that way? <laughs> <laughs> that's a amazing. book that I would keep at regular speed. I'd want to hear that. Um, I. I also wrote down his um, that that scene in the in I think it's like a schoolhouse where they're having a town meeting is just so great. That's the first time you see Captain Quint, and they're they're everybody's arguing, everybody's talking about like we gotta open the beaches, we gotta hunt the shark, blah blah blah, going back and forth, and then all of a sudden, yeah, <laughs> else on the chalkboard <laughs> happen, and I think maybe this is the first time in movie history because now it's such a trope where screeches on a chalkboard and everybody stops and looks at what's <laughs> causing it. But I think maybe this is the first time in, in history where that was done. And it shows uh, Captain Quint sitting there and he'd drawn this really cute picture of a little shark on the board. I guess that he's the one that did that. And, um, and then he gives this, he gives this great speech about how um, he, he's not going to risk his neck for $3,000, which is what they're offering. He, he'd do it for 10. And um and then I think he's eating potato chips too while he's giving the speech. <laughs> and then I think he just kind of gets up and walks out and everybody, I don't remember how that scene ends, but um, it's great. But, you know, we all know Richard Dreyfuss has been in, in a lot of movies since Jaws. Um, so I and- guess somehow the first time I missed that that was Richard Dreyfuss somehow. And it, the second time Rita was watching and she was just like, hey, it's baby Richard Dreyfuss. And I'm like, <laughs> Mr. Holland is in this movie? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, he's so young in this. Mm-hmm. And, but I, I, so he's, he's been in a ton of movies and I was wondering, um, which, uh, I was just wanted to ask you guys, which do you think is the scarier Richard Dreyfuss movie? Uh, Jaws or what about Bob? Because in Jaws, an island is being terrorized by a shark. And then, and what about Bob? An innocent family is being terrorized by a psychopath. definitely what about bob <laughs> i i haven't seen that but i mean bob sounds like a scary guy assuming <laughs> that bob is the name of the psychopath and it, it goes back to the shark is just doing what the shark does versus like a psychopath who's like i'm gonna kill you have you seen it michelle i have isn't, isn't it it's um, not really he's not really a psychopath it's bill murray no he's he's, he's a, a <laughs> it's a comedy yeah, it's like it has bill murray in it yeah and he's um he's definitely he's psychiatrist right yeah 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 yeah. he has to see a psychiatrist and his psychiatrist tries to take a like a vacation and he's like yeah can't i need your help i need you for everything and yeah yeah, so i just remember i think he brings like his pet goldfish in a bag or something with him 
but um, I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember it being, it being good. It's not scary at all. Um, it probably would have been a better movie if Bill Murray had played like a, a creepier guy who's trying to, trying to, you know, terrorizing a little bit. But what end up, ends up happening is Richard Dreyfuss is like the uptight dad and the rest of the family ends up loving Bill Murray and wanting to hang out with him and feeling sorry for him. And I guess Richard Dreyfuss learns a lesson in the end about something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. He learns a lesson about something. <laughs> How many shark's teeth do you guys rate Jaws? One out of five shark's teeth. Or one out of five bottles of apricot schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep thinking about Jaws as Bruce in my head because I read that that's what they called the shark machines that they had built. And they built three, I read. Like one was the left side with open right, one was the right with open left, and then one was like with the whole one with the skin on it. And so as I'm reading all these like facts and trivia I was going through, they're like, oh yeah, they just, you know, Bruce, blah, 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 blah. And then this yeah. they did this with Bruce. And I'm like, so now <laughs> I just, I keep thinking of him that way. Yeah, Bruce the shark. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate the film for what it did and what it does. Like, you know, that it's part of that zeitgeist and part of our pop culture. I'm going to give it a three just because it did have that bro part in the middle that was like, oh God, I'm falling asleep again. <laughs> um, but it was good to watch, you know, that, that done it, done it sound that's such a part of our, you know. Yeah. Is that John Williams? Yeah. yeah. And, and I read that when he proposed it, that Spielberg was like, okay, like for real though, like, what are you going to give us? <laughs> <laughs> like it was such a joke, but then later, like it became this big thing. Like John Williams forgot to do his homework and he's like, oh, <laughs> I got away to the set. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I, I give it a three. I would like to kind of see how this would be remade. And, and now that we can do more with bigger budgets and effects, like how, how scary could you really make something? Because back then it was about, you had to be inventive with the fear. You couldn't, I mean, the shark was terrible. It was just this big robot thing. So it was about trying to like hype up the fear using sound and using the, the environment and without really seeing this whole shark. I mean, and then when you finally see this little tiny shark, it's not even like the biggest one. So it's it's about making you scared without yeah. actually scaring you. The scale the scales of the different shark models definitely fell off. <laughs> There's like he keeps saying like we gotta get a bigger boat. We gotta get a bigger boat. That's like the most famous line of the movie. That was ad lib. It oh really? Uh, and it's a great line, but it sure didn't seem like they needed a bigger boat like Sometimes it did, and then other times it was like, I think you have a fine sized boat. <laughs> You're <able> good. <laughs> yeah, but but then other times, like they're like um, one of the early ones before the shark has any barrels in him, he swims under their boat, and it's like it's a really big shark, and it it's a really good looking shot. It looks great. That's one of the best effect shot. And and then like later when he's got the he's swimming through the water with the tank in his mouth, and he's kind of like chomping on it, like it, and it looks like a, a hand puppet, like. <laughs> a little bit so some some of the shots definitely held up and then others you know have aged a little bit the part where uh, robert shaw gets eaten like i said it affected me emotionally but <laughs> i'm just thinking about like they i'm sure it was a stunt double but they really did jerk that guy around in the shark's mouth pretty hard so you know I, they did yeah but um but yeah, okay, so three, three to five sharks teeth. Okay, Michelle? I'm going to give it four. Okay. Um, yeah, there was just some parts that were kind of languishing and um, that kind of a thing. You know, again. you know what? What you guys call languishing bro time, I call building tension, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and, and like, uh, yeah, there were just like cotton points where I, it was hard for me to like, focus so yeah uh, but it is a cultural movie and that kind of a thing so um it was I, our first summer blockbuster and over 67 million people watched it whoa yeah like that that kind of blows my mind for 1975 yeah you know? yeah wait you, you you said it's our like america's first it's, it's the first summer blockbuster according to this. oh okay oh wow Man, that's crazy. And 
two years before Star Wars. <laughs> John Williams hadn't even done Star Wars at this point. In this movie, he just did that song with two notes. And then he comes up with Star Wars two years later. Incredible. So uh, yeah, next level. Let me get let me go into my pitch here. And then after it's over, you guys tell me if you're gonna raise your tooth rating at all. <laughs> <laughs> Three amazing actors. All right, we all agree that the wardrobe is great, the mayor's blazer, um, Richard Dreyfus's whole get up um is great. Uh a great script at times. Maybe you say a little bit slow, but what I, I like to call it as building up, building up tension. That's what this movie is all about. Um, John Williams score, iconic, right? Even though it's only two, two or three notes. Uh, the Robert Shaw speech that I did very accurately. <laughs> um, if there's ever a stage play of this, I might go out for, for that part. I have the face. Um, so in my mind, and I'm usually the one that scores these movies slower than you guys, I feel like. But I'm giving this a five out of five. Uh, oh. uh, and I, it's kind of hard for me because I think this is one of those, just my whole personality is if something is, if I think something is too popular or too loved, I immediately say, it's not so, it's not as great as you think it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy into the hype. Um, and I do that with <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So my immediate knee jerk reaction is this, this is not as good as you think it is. It's, it must be overrated. But um, so I'm trying not to do that here. Uh, I know it's a piece of American cinema history, um, and I'm giving it five out of five shark teeth. Did I convince anybody uh, to raise their tooth rating? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna lower it just to spite me? <laughs> just just to spite. You know what? Two shark teeth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I, I didn't. I didn't hate it. You know, like there are some movies I've seen where I'm like, oh my god, please be over. I can't stand this. And it's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it it feels a little aged. You know what I mean? Like it's not one that if I would see it on TV, I would walk by and be like, oh, Jaws is on. <laughs> like everyone yeah. sit down. Yeah, that that's true. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to put this on just to chill out to, or I don't feel the need right now to watch it again anytime soon. If anything, did we convince you to watch your shark teeth? I, you know, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> 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 I'm a big rewatcher. And, um, you know, th to me, this is no Apollo 13, but it's still, <laughs> it's still a really good movie. And I had a blast. And I think maybe what I think, I think the biggest part of it, honestly, for me, is its connection to the sting and how it just makes me reminisce about that movie because now I want to watch the sting. So <laughs> um, maybe what I'm what I'm really rating is the sting and not this movie. But um, I'm trying to be positive here. I'm trying to be um, more upbeat than I usually am about these movies. But yeah, because we we had we had a streak there where we were just watching some real stinkers. Uh, Waterworld. Yeah. <laughs> One. It I can't think of it. That's right. Now. Neither can I. But yeah, it was like all bad movies. But <laughs> better in them. So I'm glad we're kind of getting out of that somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. Do you guys want to, Gilbert, do you want to plug anything else? And Michelle, if you want to. Yeah. Talk? So the so. libraries are fully open to the public again. It's super exciting. Um, all our locations are open back to our old extended hours before the COVID times. Um, we haven't started doing in-person programming in the libraries yet. We're still kind of waiting until September for that, but we're starting to do some outside programs at some of our libraries. So we've had the Clyburn um, um, pianist and singer at a couple of our locations. Uh, yesterday, they were at the Meadowbrook Library uh, super cool. They had, I, I think I heard like 90 something people, which is super good. Um, our summer reading program has kicked off. And so people can sign up for that on our website and go to the library website to kind of direct to there. Or we also have an app. So you can do it at fortworth.beanstack.com or just download the app Beanstack. And then once you sign in and register, then you can just log your time that you read or you can like have, you can do these little activities and get that cool. earn, earn badges. And once you have enough badges, you can go get prizes and pick them up at the library. Oh, so fun. fun. That's fun. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So we're excited. And we're doing stuff again. And, and we're just, we're happy that people are coming in and using us. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, and like, like we've talked about uh, the Libby app a lot during this episode. But if you, 
uh, didn't hear it then, then you can hear it now that, uh, yeah, Fort Worth Library has a great app called Libby. Download all kinds of stuff. I have, I've done it. It's great. Um, one thing so, I want to add too that's beyond the yeah. me, Libby, is you know y'all y'all started. I don't know how long ago it was. I'm going to say it wrong, but where um, you'll do the automatic renewals. Yeah. So as somebody who's a chronic <laughs> um, drops her library books past due, um, <laughs> that is a lovely feature that you guys have. And y'all send me a little email, just like politely reminding me, mm -hmm. like, hey, yeah. your library books we'll are due. We'll We've we'll automatically it. renewed them for you. And then when, I, when I've gone too far, you know, sometimes it'll be like, hey, you, you need to turn that in. But um, yeah, so, so y'all have a lot of cool kind of built in stuff to help us those of us over here that like struggle with that kind of thing yeah. <laughs> like returning to we, we started doing the fine. auto renewal and people will still call and be like hey i've got this thing it's due you know tomorrow can you renew it and we're like oh you're fine i looked up your account you're good for another three weeks but also uh i want to say at the end of 2018 we went fine free yeah you guys so are now That's even right. if you're overdue and people are like oh my god i've had this thing at my house for a month how much am i gonna have to pay and i'm like as long as you bring it back you're good it's all zero and they're like what so <laughs> even more reason you know to come to the library yeah. that you have nothing to worry about yeah, yeah. it's a great resource hey, michelle i know these are also exciting times for the conservation group so what mm -hmm. do we have going on there yeah so we are also um back in person with our water saving seminars and for our upcoming Yard Smart. So um, if you remember water saving seminars, those are held March through November, um, Thursdays from six to eight, it's one Thursday a week. It's usually the first Thursday of the month, um, but you'll have to check our website, Save Fort Worth Water and you can register there. We hold Savefortworthwater.org. Yes, Fort Worth, savefortworthwater.org. And we host them at Brit and um, we, uh, we bring in essentially horticultural experts. And the reason for that is that we know that, um, especially in the summer, anywhere from on average, 30% is kind of in the low range, but up to 50%, 30 to 50% of water use can be just from your irrigation system. And um, a lot of that is completely unnecessary if you have the right plants in your yard. So um, we provide you know, education to help you understand, you know, the environment here, your landscape here, plant type, what plants to choose, what is the most efficient way to water them. And the best thing about water conservation, other than it's just the right thing to do, is um, it actually also saves you, you money. So if you're using less water, you're going to save um, money. So, um, so we offer these classes on plants because of that, because we know a lot of excess water use is going to the landscape. And so again, our water saving seminars, they just started back up in person. We had one last night. Um, the next one is, you would think I'd have it ready, um, pulled up. It is, let's see, August the 12th and it's made for the shade. So that's gonna be shade gardening. And then we also have Yard Smart. So that we typically have twice a year. And those are usually on Saturdays, the weekends. And um, this year, uh, it's going to be September 18th, and it's an all day, essentially a conference. So typically before they were just kind of like a, several seminars kind of squished together. Um, but this time it is a full blown conference, multiple tracks. Um, we do have some information on the webpage right now about that we're still kind of finalizing the, um, all the uh, speakers. So as soon as we get that, uh, we'll get some of that more of that information out so you know just slowly returning back to normal and then of course um for at least for the water saving seminars if you're still not quite ready to get back in person we have started um webex live streaming it so you can get that information um out there if you're still not quite comfortable or if you know that time's just not convenient for you we're not recording them but you know you can, maybe you're having supper at home and you can kind of have it on and kind of like pot, treat it like a podcast or something to get that information. So cool. that's what's going on um, in water conservation. You can find all that at savefortworthwater.org. And it, yeah. I don't know if you mentioned it, but it's all free. All of it. Yes. Yeah. Come on out. And uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this slow 
uh, <laughs> movie with me. Riveting. <laughs> and uh, that you were so phenomenal. moved that you had to <laughs> do a, a, a spoken word. So, okay. <laughs> so thanks everybody for listening. Um, see you next time on H2 OMG. You all know me, you know how I make a living. This is a bad fish. He can eat you up and swallow you whole. A little tenderizing, a little shaking, and down you go. I'll be honest, this isn't like going down to the pond and catching bluegills and tommy cods. <clears throat> this is gonna be a lot harder. It ain't gonna be easy. And I don't want any other captains. I don't want any other shipmates. And it's gonna cost you a lot more than 3,000. I value my neck more than that. I'll find them for 3,000, but I'll catch them and kill them for 10. I know you guys all want your businesses back or you'll all be on the dole very soon. You'll be out there on Welfare Street. Well, I don't want to see that happen. 10,000 is a little small amount for you to have to go through all that. You're gonna do the voice at all? You don't do the, you're doing your straight voice. The character of- He sounded like me, I thought. He's got an Irish accent or something, yeah. doesn't he? The Quint, I, this is Quint from Jaws, you're doing? He talks like this, like a pirate.